Hi, welcome back to my channel and another video about aviation photography. This one is sort of a follow-up video. So if you saw one of my recent videos, I talked about some serious problems I was having with my Tamron 150 to 600 mm G2 lens. Uh, I'll put a link back to that video up here. Uh, it's been my main aviation photography lens for a good four years or so and I never really managed to get to the root cause of the problem but I was definitely having issues with sharpness and maybe even focus too. I had it professionally calibrated and I even sent it back to Tamron under warranty for a service but none of those things fixed the problems and as much as I love the design features and uh, build quality I lost all confidence in the lens. I just could not rely on it to produce acceptable results. And for me, that's a big deal, especially when shooting rare aircraft visiting the UK. So the Tamron has now gone and I have a new lens for aviation photography. So what did I get? Well, let's first consider the options. The obvious one was to replace the 150 to 600 super zoom with one from Sigma. Uh, I decided against this because I didn't want to risk running into a similarly disappointing lack of sharpness at 600 millimeters. Now don't get me wrong, I respect those that have this lens and there are plenty of people who highly recommend it. My issue that I can't get past though is that third party lens manufacturers have to kind of reverse engineer things to make their lens designs work with Canon and Nikon cameras. So there's always a risk of compatibility niggles and firmware issues. After my Tamron experience, I'd simply had enough and didn't really want to go down that route. But believe me, I spent lots of time and effort researching the Sigma 150 to 600 Contemporary and came very close to pressing the buy now button several times. One thing I also needed to think about was future compatibility uh, for if and when I make the move from DSLR to mirrorless for my aviation photography. Let's face it, it's inevitable. And for me, a big consideration, probably just like many of you, was cost. I'm not a professional, I don't sell my photos, and I do all this landscape photography, aviation photography and vlogging for my own enjoyment. And if you enjoy it and you get something from it and can benefit from my experience, then that's great. In which case, tap that like button for me. So let's get down to it then. This is what I replaced the Tamron with. I decided to invest wisely, or at least that's what I think. I bought this. It's a Canon 300 millimeter F 2.8 IS USM Prime. Um, this one is a first generation lens. So it's an old design from around 1999 or so. Uh, this one was actually made in 2009, I think. Uh, reviews online suggest that it has been uh, regarded as one of Canon's finest ever lenses and sharpness is exactly what I'm looking for. I know what you're thinking, 300 millimeters, what happened to the 600? Well. After lots and lots of consideration and admittedly a bit of risk taking, I decided to try this lens out with my 2X extender. So from previous experience, um, have a look at this video here. Uh, I regularly use this extender with my 70 to 200 and I'm seriously impressed with the results. And my experience with the 400 prime is incredible. So I decided to try it with this 300 prime. Uh, I think I'm now of the opinion that provided you start with an exceptionally sharp f2.8 lens, adding a 2x extender doesn't really seem to significantly adversely affect the optical quality. Uh, the aperture becomes 5.6, but that's actually quite decent for a 600 millimeter lens. So what are the benefits of getting this lens? Well, firstly, this is a super sharp telephoto lens with image stabilization. 
secondly, I get a 300 millimeter prime that is superb in low light, thanks to its fast uh, F 2.8 aperture. And it's great for shooting close up to aircraft, uh, shooting big aircraft, or for those really poorly lit and dull overcast days when you just need more light. And third, it's an old lens design, so you can pick these up for actually quite a decent price. Granted, they're still a lot of money, but buying one second hand puts it within the reach of more photographers. One of the uh, biggest obvious downsides is the lack of zoom. So I have actually given up quite a lot of flexibility with this lens. And uh, that said, I often shoot with two cameras. So I've always got the option of having one of my other aviation lenses on another camera body uh, to give me that flexibility. So for me, it was something to take into account, but actually not that big of a deal. Plus, I've consciously started to shoot at the 600 millimeter end more often uh, to try and take some more frame filling dynamic detailed shots. Um, I'll put a picture up, something a little bit like this. The other disadvantage of this lens is its weight. Now you might say it's heavy. So all of that comes in at around three kilos or um, six and a half ish pounds for my uh, friends over in the US. I think hand holding this lens is achievable but I'm under no illusion it will get tiring after a long air show day. I accept that this is at the upper end of hand holdability. Uh, the newer Mark II version is also available on the second hand market and is considerably lighter, but significantly more expensive. So how does it perform with the 2X uh, extender? Well, I have to say that I am super impressed. I've now had a couple of test sessions with it uh, in both cloudy and sunny conditions. Uh, both shooting the F-15s and F-35s at RAF Lakenheath and I'm very happy, very happy with uh, my initial set of test shots. Uh, I've shot it on both my Crop Sensor 7D Mark II and my Full Frame 5D Mark III and I'm honestly blown away by the results. In only two sessions with it, it is seriously outgunning and outperforming the Tamron uh, 600mm by a significant margin. Now that may come as no surprise, they're completely different types of lenses at different price points, but don't forget they're also about two decades apart in design. And let's not forget the 300 is designed to be super sharp at 300, but it has a 2x extender on it, and super zooms have to show acceptable sharpness throughout their range of 150 to 600 but my Tamron was truly awful at 600 millimeters, which is why I got this. I've still got lots of testing to do. Uh, it's still early days and I've yet to put absolute confidence in the performance of this lens, but so far I am more impressed with its contrast, uh, speed of focus and sharpness with the 2X extender at 600 millimeters than I thought I would be. So that's actually really encouraging. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and like this video and I hope to see you again soon for some more aviation photography using this lens. Thanks for watching, bye for now.